All right, Girdles, a common question I get is about duration gap management. So let's take a couple minutes and dig in. To understand our interest rate gap, we first need to understand a bank's assets and liabilities. So a bank's assets are anything that makes the bank money. So here, think of the loans that the bank makes or the investments that the bank holds. And for its liabilities, think anything that the bank is paying out. So think interest to its depositors. And so now let's take a look at a traditional yield curve and then we'll come back to look at our positive and negative interest rate gap. Under normal market conditions, we tend to see an upward sloping yield curve. And what this means for a bank is that they're going to try to borrow capital on the short end of the yield curve. So think of their liabilities or their depositors on the short end of the yield curve, whereas they want to make loans on the farther end of the yield curve. Think of a traditional 30-year mortgage here in the United States. And so their net interest margin is the difference between what they earn on their assets and what they pay out on their liabilities. Now, think about what happens if this yield curve inverts. Now, if the yield curve becomes inverted and the bank still has its liabilities over on the short end of the yield curve, all of a sudden they're going to have to start paying more interest to their deposit holders, whereas their assets over here on the long end of the yield curve won't adjust to the new interest rate. They'll be fixed, but all of a sudden, now if they're paying out more on their liabilities than they're earning on their assets, the bank will have a negative net interest income. Now, if we look at the left-hand side of our chart here, where we see a positive gap, and by positive gap, what we mean is that more assets are going to reprice over this time period than liabilities. So if we have rising interest rates and we have more assets that are going to reprice, well, those assets are going to reprice to the higher interest rate, which means our change in net interest income will be positive right? Because our assets are going to start making us more money. If over that same time period, we have no gap or a zero gap, the change in our net interest income would be zero. However, if we look over our right-hand side at our negative gap, and what we mean by this is more liabilities are going to reprice over this time horizon than assets. Well, and if interest rates rise, what this means is we're going to be paying our depositors more money to keep their assets at our bank. And thus, this is going to um, hurt our net interest income. So if banks tend to borrow short term and lend long term, how can they get their assets and liabilities to reprice together to help eliminate that interest rate risk? They can reduce the gap in three basic ways. The first being that they can offer more floating rate loans. So as yields rise, so do their earnings on their assets. The second way here is they can lock in longer term funding. So when we think of longer term funding, think of CDs where they're locking up that capital for a longer period of time. And the third way here is using interest rate swaps to convert fixed rate loans into floating exposure. Here we see a chart of the current US Treasury yield curve which actually shows that it's moderately inverted between the two to five year range. So let's say that your bank believes that this three year rate is artificially low and will rise over time. What could they do? Well, what they could do 
is use floating rate loans that mature in this two to five year window. So this will help them take advantage of the rising rates in the two to five year range. They could also use interest rate swaps to convert their fixed rate assets into floating rate exposures in this time frame. And finally, they would probably want to take advantage of these lower rates by issuing more liabilities in this time frame. So issuing longer term CDs between the two to five year range.